My greatest accomplishment as an educator is figuring out that kids have more to teach me than I have to teach them. In fact, kids taught me how to be a better learner. And I'm gonna talk more about that in a moment. But if you think about it, it makes sense that our kids have a very different perspective on learning. They're growing up in this connected world and that's how they wanna learn. I'm a new mom. Naturally, I'm fascinated by my baby. And I'm also fascinated to watch how she learns growing up in this connected world. She loves stories, she loves books, and our family is scattered across the globe. So we use a service that allows our family on their end to video record themselves inside a storybook reading to our daughter. On our end, we get to look at it whenever we want. I call it grandparents on demand. In fact, <laughs> here's a picture of my daughter with one of the books. We thought this would be a nice to have. We thought before bed, grandma will read a story and then we'll read a story. But it ended up being much more than that. And by the time my daughter was 18 months old, she would run across the room, grab the iPad, swipe to unlock, navigate to the app, and pick out a story. <laughs> a constant reminder to me that relationships are important and our kids want to feel connected. As I travel around, I see more and more technology in classrooms. I see kids practicing skills and researching facts. I even see kids creating their own content, and that's amazing. But what I rarely see is kids communicating and collaborating beyond their own classroom. So I'm gonna share a cartoon with you really quickly. I won't read the whole thing for you, but I'd like you to think about, can you relate to this? So here it is, life before Google, a short story. So I'm certainly old enough to remember a world before Google. But our kids have never known a time when they couldn't find the answer whenever they wanted it, when they didn't have that power of 24-7 access to information. The thing is, it's overwhelming. It's a lot of information. In fact, Mitchell K. Four says, getting information off the internet is like taking a drink from a fire hydrant. I can relate to that too. <laughs> So how do we manage this? How do we manage learning with all of this information? And I often get the best answers from kids. They're very creative problem solvers, great ideas. So I asked a student once, what do you do when you want to learn about something? What's your first step? And he said, well, I think about who's knowledgeable about that, and I ask them for help. And I thought that was quite brilliant. It's about the who. Who am I connecting with? Who can teach me? Who can I learn from? Kids are building learning networks. And the, the main focus is the who, and it reminds me of the saying, it's who you know, not what you know. So I thought that was important. Outside of school, our kids are having amazing learning experiences that are personalized and authentic. Outside of school, our kids get to pick their teachers and pick their content. Project Tomorrow does an annual survey called the Speak Up Survey. They get hundreds of thousands of kids to share their ideas about learning. And one of the things that they learned is that we have what they call free agent learners. These are kids that don't wait on traditional educational institution, institutions to learn. They're making it happen on their own. In fact, almost half of our kids, almost 50% of our kids, are already using Facebook for learning and collaborating. These kids get themselves to the library and to Starbucks, not for the books and not for the coffee, well, maybe for the coffee, but for the internet access. That's what they care about because their relationships are important, their connections are important, they wanna be connected with their learning network. So I see two trends that are gonna give us even more of these free agent learners. And the first one is mobile devices. Many of you have these with you today. These powerful, low cost devices that are in your pocket that allow you to connect with anyone, anywhere, anytime. And that's really powerful. The second trend, uh, it's, it's happening a little more quietly, but I think it's extremely powerful. And that's open educational resources. And that's just the fancy name for free learning materials that are available to anyone. This is anything from Khan Academy to the content the professors from Harvard, Stanford, Yale, MIT, these amazing universities, they're putting their content into iTunes U for free for anyone. You can go there today and check it out. What's amazing to me is this is not only personalized and authentic, it's incredibly flexible. Our kids can control the pace 
the length, the frequency of the conversation, of the learning. And that's really powerful because we're all different. We have different learning styles. This makes learning accessible to everyone. You no longer have to be an extrovert to be involved in the conversation, to be involved in the learning. And I think that's really powerful. So my dream is that our kids have these powerful learning experiences, not only outside of school, but also inside of school. So what would this look like? Imagine a student, a seven-year-old, learning about traditions. He just finished a video chat with his grandparents learning about family traditions. Now he's sending messages to kids all over the world, Egypt, China, New Zealand, Israel, Ecuador, kids all over the world asking about their traditions, learning about their culture. Imagine a group studying poetry. One of the poets they've been reading lives in India and he's agreed to video conference in. He's using his poems to teach different forms of poetry. Imagine a learner passionate about technology. She's been studying ancient civilizations and she's decided to build an app. She's gonna build an app to teach others about the characteristics of a civilization, but she doesn't wanna do it alone. So she's partnered up with a friend in Singapore. They've collaboratively storyboarded the app. Once it's developed, it'll be available to anyone in the world to use and learn from. Imagine a learner studying geometry and real world mathematical problems. This student is connected to family, friends, and community members that have jobs related to geometry in the real world. For example, a jeweler, a graphic designer, a landscape architect. Imagine a group studying earth science. They're learning that objects in the sky move in regular and predictable patterns. The teacher has created a resource list. It's actually contact information for scientists and experts in the field. When the kids have a question, they know who to go to. It's working so well. The teacher decides to go on Twitter to share the success. She sends out a tweet telling people how powerful it is connecting her kids. It just so happens someone from NASA sees that tweet. Next week, a NASA astronaut is going to make a guest appearance via video conference. I'm sure you've guessed. Uh, these are not just scenarios. These are things that have already happened and with kids 12 and under. It's not only possible, it's easy to do. There's a number of free services and networks out there designed to get our kids safely connected. And so for our younger kids, what we do as the adults, as the parents, the teachers, the family members, we make the connections, we facilitate the interactions, and we model the behavior. And this is gonna prepare our kids for when they're older making connections on their own. So let's talk about our older kids, our teenagers. What do we know about our teenagers? 76% of all teenagers are already using social media. So it's time for us to get involved in that conversation. Imagine older students learning about ethics of war. The teacher has asked them to find credible sources to gain different perspectives. These kids are connecting with people all over the world, war veterans, historians, professors. They're hearing personal stories, and they're learning about the rules of engagement. The teacher sees the unique connections that are being made and decides to have a debate. Each student is going to take on the perspective of the person they connected with. So imagine that impact. That doesn't happen from reading out of a textbook. As we discussed earlier, we don't know what education is going to look like 5, 10, or 20 years from now. But what I do know is what we can do now. We can get our kids connected. We can make the learning personalized, authentic, and flexible, allowing our kids to follow their passion and find their purpose. As John Dewey said, all learning begins when our comfortable ideas turn out to be inadequate. Before I go, I want to take a moment to thank some of the members of my learning network. These are just the few of the people that I learn from on a regular basis. It's adults and kids from all over the world. Many of them I've never met in person. They're my teachers and they inspire me. I want to thank you for listening. I encourage you to go out, make connections, build your network, and learn like a kid. Thank you. <laughs>